she's passionate about telling stories of amazing women who are rocking the world and empowering women to live, love, and thrive. Here's your host, Katherine Gray. On the Live, Love, Thrive Women's Empowerment Hour, as you know, we always have on extraordinary guests. And of course, today we have on a superstar. She is a pioneer in the LGBT community, a comedian, and a real trailblazer. Please give a warm welcome to Robin Tyler. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good to finally actually, get you on. I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'm excited because you have a, actually a live show coming up on Saturday, November 15th, right? November 16th. 16th. Yeah. Okay. Of course, I messed it up. That's okay. But, um, uh, at Santa Monica Playhouse, which I love. Yes, it's very yes. charming it's place. It's called Always a Bridesmaid, Never a Groom. Yeah. And actually, I did it years ago in the 70s. When Harvey Firestein did Torch Song Trilogy, I did Always a Bridesmaid for the Glines, John Glines. And one day Harvey was on, the next day mine was on. But the critics wrote, although both plays are very funny, Robin Tyler's idea of marrying somebody of the same sex just doesn't cut it. Right? <laughs> That's funny. Realistic. Back then, they couldn't even imagine, they right? They couldn't even imagine. Yeah. And I, w- I would talk about, I wanted to marry somebody. I just didn't want to date. I'm Jewish. I don't want to be cheap. You know what I mean? <laughs> and and uh, so I brought it back. But now I brought it up to now. You know, as you know, we sued and won. Yeah. Uh, marriage rights. Uh, Diane well, and I were the plaintiffs. Yeah, I want to talk about that because yeah. that's like huge. It's, it's history making. Uh-huh. Uh, so you and your partner of 23 years who you just lost. I'm so sorry. Years. Yes. 26. You know what I, um, how I say it? I say we were married yeah. 26 years, legally married 10. So that way yeah. people can get the scope of right. the relationship. Right, right. Yeah. Well, uh, you all were the first couple uh, in California to get married legally, right? What what we were, Adele and Among Phyllis. Among the first. Yeah. No, no. What, what, what we were is Diane and I were the first plaintiffs in the lawsuit that brought marriage equal marriage equality to California. Right. So the name of the lawsuit is Tyler v. State of California. Right. And then Reverend Troy Perry and his partner sued to have their Canadian marriage recognized. And so the reason we got to marry first is we started the lawsuit. And at the same time, our friends of ours, Del Martin and Phyllis Lyon, they got married in San Francisco at the same I time. I remember them, yes. Right? So the two couples... And, and we, I was friends with Dell and, and Phyllis forever. That's how I came out. I picked up a little uh, booklet in 1959, and it said, when I, when I had a crush on a girl, and I ran down in Banff to school, and I picked up a booklet, and it said, if you're a woman and you like another woman, what you are is a lesbian, everybody could tell you you're wrong. But if it feels right to you, it is right. Signed, Del Martin and Phyllis Lyon. P.S. Oh moved to gosh. a big city immediately. Oh, my gosh. So this was fantastic. years ago. So it's interesting. Okay. So when I got to the States and Patty and I, Pat Harrison and I were a comedy team, we were on our way to Vietnam and I called them up and I said, you don't know me, my name is Robin Tyler, this is the 70s, but I'm gonna become a famous activist thanks to you and I'd like you to meet me at the airport, we're going to Vietnam. So Del and Phyllis drove to the airport thinking I was on drugs and they were were (laughs) gonna take me home. And that's how I met them and then you know, 50 years later, we got married at the, the exact same time, Diane and I and Del and Phyllis. Well, I know, so. yeah, and you guys were the first to, uh, you know, uh, you, you went down to the courthouse in Beverly Hills, right? Yes. They turned you down. For four years, four for or five four years. Four years, yeah. right. And then uh, when the California Supreme Court finally decided that you could get married, uh-huh. uh, they allowed you to do it first before they even opened it up to yes. the licenses the next day. Right. So you, got, we, you right. were the first one at the Beverly Hills uh uh, courthouse yes. to get married. Yes, that's because Diane was from Beverly Hills. Right. So, so we and we wanted to get married in the bastion of radical gay liberation, Beverly Hills, California. Yeah. Oh my God, that was perfect. You know, that so was we are everywhere. And, and Gloria uh, Allred uh, was uh, representing you at yeah, the time, right? Gloria was actually I've been friends with Gloria, real friends, not yeah. like show business. You yeah. Know, yeah. Since the seventies, oh and my gosh. so uh, when we asked Gloria to do the lawsuit, we did the lawsuit because. I was a member of uh, AFTRA, American Federation of Television and Radio Artists, Mm -hmm. and I was going to retire. And they gave domestic partnership uh, medical insurance to people up until when they retired. And then if you weren't married, you couldn't get it. They would drop your partner from the roles. So I called them and I said, I'm retiring. Are you going to continue to give Diane medical? And they said, no. I said, why not? And she said, well, that's just the way it is, hon. So I hung up the phone and I called Gloria, and that's actually what started the lawsuit, was the discrimination against us. 
and none of the show business unions would give mm -hmm. it to people after, uh, would give domestic partnership benefits after age 65. Right. And so we changed, before, before we won the lawsuit, after changed, then the Screen Actors Guild changed, then the Writers Guild, the Directors Guild, but everybody thinks that show business was so liberal. Yeah. They were not liberal. You know, they were, so, you yeah. know, at the same time you all were fighting this gay marriage yes. thing, I'm on the other coast creating I Can't Marry You, a film about gay marriage and the federal <laughs> rights and benefits and protections that we didn't have because not even gay people knew. Right. I never, they I didn't never, even know which rights they didn't have. Is there such thing as a gay death certificate? No. Is there a gay birth certificate? No. There's no such thing as gay marriage. It's only marriage. You're right. In other words, You're it's right. a contract. But marriage for gays, yeah. Marriage, we, we call it marriage, uh, uh, yeah, marriage equality, marriage for same-sex couples. And that's why my film was called I Can't Marry You. Right. So it was just like, uh, you know. It was know, perfect. It, you, it was, yeah, yeah, if you if fall in love with somebody, you can't marry them. That's the bottom line. So You know what happens? People think that activism is due yeah. to one person, like it's Ivy Milk did everything, or this one did everything. Yeah, oh, it's the a collective, is, for it's sure. A, from the ground up, it's yeah. a whole bunch of people Isn't it? that put their life on the line yes. and, 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 and fight and struggle. Frank Kameny in the 50s, yes. right, to file for, because he was a scientist that got fired by the government, and it, and it was... Under the Eisenhower administration, you could not yeah. get a job yeah. if you were in the federal government, if you were gay or lesbian, and that did not, was not struck down until Bill Clinton right. 50 years later. Right. So Frank Kameny, Troy Perry that started MCC Church, yeah. uh, there was so many... A large, large movement. Hu huge movement. You know what I want to talk about, though, is you. Uh -oh. And I want to talk oh, about me? the All fact right. that... No, um, let's talk about you. <laughs> Nobody interviews you. How are you today? <laughs> you know... You, you are such a trailblazer in this gay community, and I want to talk, I definitely want to cover all the things you've done, because I know you're most known for, at least in the L.A. community at this moment, for, you know, being uh, the first to get married and, and, right. and helping to change that law. But what led up to that is fascinating, and a lot of people don't know that you're from Canada, ah. that, that you ran away and uh, at age to New 40, York. At age yeah. 14, right, yeah. I... Uh, I got my you know what that, that yeah. girls get, but yeah. I didn't realize I was a girl. Yeah. And uh, my mother sat me down and told me after that I could get pregnant and everything, and I thought it was like a boy, you know? Yeah. So I just, I was in shock, and I got on a, I, I got on a train with no money. Any, I just decided to run away from home. Oh not, and I got on a train and I, uh, toward Minneapolis. I figured if I could make it to the States, I could be what I wanted. And, of course, the RCMP, do you know what that is? The no. Royal, Royal Canadian Mounted Police caught me on the train, and they took me home. And, oh, my uh, gosh. And so I ran away from home. And I moved to New York very young. I was uh, early 20s. And... Um, and I, I moved to New York, uh, and I went to my first drag ball, right? And you told me you were like a street kid. I was. Well, yeah. I, yeah. After, I, I was a, actually, what happened was I was in the Y for three days, and then they threw you out. And I was walking along the street with my suitcase, and uh, these women would drive in Cadillacs along the street, along the big streets, to find people, kids that looked like little less. At the time, we were all gay, but gay women or gay kids. And they stopped their, their car, and they said, uh, I, I do have a place to go, and I said no, I don't. Don't. So they picked me up, and I didn't know anything about. I, I got in the car I'm from Canada. I didn't know about sex trafficking or anything. I mean, oh my God! And I just went in the car, and they took me to uh, uh, this woman that had offered to share her her apartment, Big Gus on 18th, 305 West 18th Street, and and that's how I got my first home till I got a job. But there was no center. There was no nothing. So they just went along. And but wait, so this wasn't sex trafficking. They just wanted to truly help you. Yes, there was this whole oh, organized amazing. group of lesbians wow. in New York that took a car and went around and picked up homeless kids. Oh, my God, isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Wow, you were lucky. Well, they're yeah. the heroines. You know, they're people yeah. that no, nobody knows about them, but they're, they're our heroes. Well, angels. You know? Yeah, earth yeah, angels, angels, I call them. So how did you get... Uh, into the comedy business. Um, I know you've done so many things. You have an album uh, that's the same name as your show you're about to do. Always oh, a Bridesmaid, Never a Groom, right? That was a, a popular gay album that's actually in the Smithsonian. Yeah. How it, amazing is that? It w well, I mean, it, it was the first out lesbian or gay album because yeah. I was the first out lesbian or gay comic. And you had this... Um, comic partner that you worked with right. uh, in here's what happened I, I go to New York Pat. I'm a kid yeah. I go to my first drag ball the police raid the drag ball 
They arrest 44 men and me for female impersonation. Oh they take me, and all, they're all the queens are screaming, she's a, she's a girl. So the guards, you call, call each other girl, this girl, that. So uh, they take me to, to jail and they allow me one phone call. So did I call my mother? Can you imagine? Hello, mom. It's it's I'm I'm in jail for female impersonation. She, you know, I no. I called the New York Post and the headlines read: 44 men and one woman arrested for female impersonation. So I thought this is great. I'm going to become a female impersonator. <laughs> so I went to the 82 Club yeah. and and I auditioned. And he said, Okay, what what guy do you want to do? I said, I want to do a woman. This is before Victor <laughs> Victoria, right? Yeah, yeah. And he said, Well, who can you do? I said, Well, I can do Judy Garland, and I could the real voice. Oh, yeah, I have a a picture together, of it but yeah. i could actually i can actually sing her oh my god that's or fantastic. i could so i became the one of the most famous female impersonators in the united states and i worked with all these other female impersonators so wait so uh i was a, a wom woman a yeah. woman pretending to be a man pretending to be a woman yes <laughs> yes all i had Just to like do victor was victoria all i had to do was accentuate yes yeah. except in victor victoria she was heterosexual and i wasn't right but all i had to, and they never in the end of the show Everybody had to shout out who they thought the real woman in the show was. They never thought it was me. Oh my gosh, because that's great! I, you know, I look like but, a pixie. I mean, yeah, you were you were hot. I mean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> look at those young yeah. pictures of you. I mean, one night and, and, Patty came to see me, yeah. and and I saw her, and she looked just like. Audrey Hepburn. Yeah, and, and what I a went gorgeous down. couple. Yeah, yeah, well, I went down and said, I'm going to marry you, and her lover did not take it well. <laughs> but so, you guys end up being friends and performers for 50 we end, years, We ended right? up being a comedy team. She was a high yeah. fashion model. We ended up being a comedy team. And when Stonewall happened, uh, we went, the second night we went, we heard about it, but I couldn't participate because I would have been arrested. Right. Being from Canada and thrown out of the country. You know, when oh, you came yeah. to the United States, you had to sign something saying, I'm not a prostitute, I'm not a, a drug addict, I'm not a communist, and I'm not a homosexual. Oh, my God. So I signed. I wasn't a homosexual. I was a lesbian. <laughs> so, so, But I couldn't. So I went back after Stonewall to our apartment with Patty, and I said, I will never, ever not participate again. And actually, it was that that made me an activist. And I said, I'll, right. you know, I will spend the rest of my life trying trying to do something. Wow, and you have. Yeah, so yeah. Patty and I went to Vietnam, and w first they wouldn't let us work as, as Harrison and Tyler. They called us Robin and Rachel. Ty we had to be sisters. Trust me, oh. we were sisters, right? Yeah. And, yeah. and then after we went, to, we took an anti-war show. We took a show to Vietnam, yeah. and the minute we saw that war, we started doing anti-war material, right. came back, called ourselves Harrison and Tyler, were picked up by ABC, and you know Fred Silverman, the head of ABC, I'm going to sure. make you girls stars. And I said, yeah. well, Mr. Silverman, we're lesbians. It's all right as long as you don't tell anybody. Everybody, you know, in show business, there's a lot of gay people. I said, you know, and I, we made him take the morals contract out, which was the first time in television history. And we started doing pilot after pilot. But instead of doing, um, uh, uh, you know, we were like the Smothers Brothers. We were a political comedy team, mm -hmm. and they were trying to make us into Laverne and Shirley. So the night we fought, which I hated. Yeah. So when we started in the Croft Comedy Hour, uh, Anita Bryant was out, you know, was, was coming against us. And so I was at a demonstration and I said, Anita Bryant is to Christianity would paint by numbers is to art. And that day the national <laughs> news picked up a vowed lesbian, Robin Tyler, goes after Anita Bryant. You couldn't be a lesbian in those days. You had to be a vowed. You had to, sw I swear I'm a lesbian, right? Yeah. So um, of course the network let us go. Which is great. I am. People ask me if how I feel about it because Ellen is out. You know, Ellen yeah. got a show. I feel great because you're not in control. If you can't be on, if Richard Pryor had had to go out there and pretend he was white, how 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 smart or how how brilliant could he have been? Do you right, know what I mean? Right. You had so to the, be yourself. You have yeah. you have to be. You out. have to be authentic. So yeah. I started to go on. I had been starting since '72 to do open material. But I started to go on stage and tell the story of telling my mother. And, and I had no one to imitate because I was the first one. Yeah. But I, and I did the record, Always a Bridesmaid, Never a Groom. And uh, I became the first out comic. So Yeah, but the also, mom of lesbian comedy, I heard. Yeah, sort of. Yeah. The mom and dad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm both. That's right. I, I'm genderqueer. So, <laughs> so, um, so the trajectory was, here you are in New York, and you started the comedy career uh, when you met? Pat no, I was in L.A. We had moved to L.A. by you that time. You moved to L.A. by then. So yeah. how did you get from New York to L.A.? Just curious. Plane. 
that's it. I mean, you because just, in L.A. You just said to my, yourself, this is where I could have a career. Well, you know what? We didn't have much of an act, but in L- it went, so we figured we'd break into television because you didn't need an act. Yeah. You just needed a relationship, right? Yeah. And so we were lucky. And what was the name of the show? Uh, well, that wasn't a, the, the, finally put us in the Croft Comedy Hour, but that oh, was Croft a children's Comedy. show. I mean, oh. it wasn't, first it was going to be the Harrison and Tyler show, and we just, you know, they were trying to make us into two cute girls. Oh, and they're trying to squeeze you into this comedy show that existed rather than having you do your own thing. They had which could tried have been to, really great. No, yeah. no, yeah. because our own thing, they were trying to make us into cute little. Yeah, no, I mean, it could have been really great if they let you be yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. could have been the Smothers Brothers. But yes, they, they had yeah. never seen women do political humor. Right. Anyway, um, I, uh, I was in uh, uh, Minneapolis doing a show, St. Paul, and uh, there was a referendum against St. Paul, and I said, what are you going to do? if you lose and they said we don't know and I said why don't we march on Washington so they formed the Minnesota com- this is the first march Minnesota for committee for the march on Washington and the the result was the 79 march on Washington a lot of people think Harvey Milk started it and I love him but he didn't it was started in Minnesota as a result wow. of my call then when it came when the, they dissolved because the women and men you know the women you know they were talking to the guys but anyway three months later they dissolved Harvey recalled the march and when he was, and some people wanted it, it's like the movement, you know, everybody has a different thing. But the minute he got assassinated, everybody agreed wow. to march. Right. So. Now, the march took place uh, three times that you Produ- were the event producer for the main stage. I was the main stage producer. Wow, that's a huge undertaking. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to think of what year but I But you know went. what, I came out of show business, so yeah. I understood how to produce. Yeah. And it was and, and and they just wanted political speakers and I knew we yeah. also had to have entertainment. Right. So I so I would put on, you know, we'd have like on the ninety three March who did you see in the march and I'll tell you what not You year. know, uh it was at a stadium and um That's different they, yeah. They had stuff up on the screen and so we marched in the day and then it all ended up at JFK Stadium. And Ellen was in the march. I remember that. Okay, that was that was probably ninety three, and that was the rock thing. Yes. At the march in in in, in eighty seven, we could only I could only get um, Whoopi Goldberg, Robert Blake, and Zelda Rubinstein, the little star of ET. Yeah. And the and Time Magazine didn't uh, didn't write about it. They said they didn't know we were in Washington. There was like six hundred thousand of us. Oh my God. Eighty seven was important because the two big things were the AIDS quilt and the wedding. Yes. And so it went from the AIDS quilt representing the gay liberation movement. There was a big split in the movement. Should we fight for liberation and sexual freedom or should we fight for civil rights? Right. And I wanted to fight for civil rights because I didn't care what we did in the privacy of our own bedroom. Right. Eventually we overturned the sodomy law, but you can't do anything. We, we, we had to see it ourselves as a civil rights movement and the march didn't want us to put on the wedding, the committee, yeah. but I did it anyway. Two men requested it and we got thousands of people. It's, it's known as the wedding now the first mass civil rights demonstration right, right. for marriage. I remember that because at the time you were doing that, I feel like synonymously, didn't they do it in New York? At some point there was a big wedding thing in New York. Too. Not, n- not Maybe in that was 87. Later. That was probably later. Yeah, this was. This yeah. is always, when yeah. you're old, you're always doing the first just because <laughs> you're old and no one's done it. This was called the wedding and yeah. uh, and it, and and thousands came and then and and then we realized you know Troy had been marrying people at MCC Church in the '60s, yeah. doing you know holy unions and stuff. But we understood finally that that this was this was you know interest comes from the grassroots up, right? Yeah. It's the tail that wags the dog, not the head. Yeah. So we said this is what they want, marriage, and we began to understand that this could be maybe the first thing we could grab at right. that would organize, that would organize. Yes. And uh, because it was sexy, it was about love and commitment yeah. and, you know, Tupperware and no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and, and also because of AIDS, yeah. these guys lost everything. Had they been married, yeah, the families was... could have not wiped them out, you yeah. know. So, uh, and by 93, um, we got a lot more stars. We got mm-hmm. Melissa and Martina and uh, Surya McAllen and uh, Judith Light. And we did a, um, a military number. I call it a number because I produced it was actually produced like a number and they did they, they were anti the military a lot of the committee mm-hmm. I'm not anti military I'm just anti war but mm-hmm. the military gives people a you know they can join and get college education or whatever right and they had thrown all these gays and lesbians out of the military so I produced this number and they said well you're not going to use the military playing marching music I said absolutely not 
So I used a tape of the London Philharmonic playing all the military <laughs> music and the flags. And that was the oh, that's fabulous. bigger than all the stories were all the Greta Kammermeyer and all the people yeah. that had been thrown out of the military walking on stage. So yeah. that was uh, interesting. And, uh, now, was that the last march on no, Washington? No, there was a small march uh, in yeah. 2000. Uh, no, 2000 was the uh, Millennium March on Washington. I called that, but I ended up leaving because there was a discrepancy in the... Mm -hmm. uh, in the, yeah. I don't know how to say it, but I didn't feel the money was secure, so I left that march. Now, you also did uh, 25 uh, festivals. Women's Music and Comedy Festivals. Yeah, that's amazing. Now, um, and transgender I, was not an issue. We didn't care. We, yeah. we didn't, we, as long as everyone did their three hour work shift, or, or, you know, our coordinator was transgender, Michelle, uh, because we needed a fire captain, and the only fire captain we could get was was Michelle, thank God. And uh, so, so of course just, you were trailblazing in that arena too. Well, we yeah. didn't, there was no issue about it. You right. know, when I was at the 82 Club, I worked with people that were taking hormones or we didn't talk about transgender then, but they were, and I debated Chris Jorgensen in the 60s though, because Christine Jorgensen, when she, she first transitioned, she came out and said being gay was bad. And so I debated her on the, she later changed her, her mind. Mm. But she said, oh, I became a woman because men and men, you know, we straightened her out in a couple of years. <laughs> but that, yeah, that was it. So yeah. I've always been fighting not for just, all we wanted was equality. Right. And so it's not up to a group of people to decide, should this be the right to serve in the military or the right to get married? Of course. Or it should be all rights. And then if they don't want, oh, by the way, did you see Elizabeth Warren do that marriage joke? No. Oh, she did. And she she said um, uh, a man, a man. He said a man came up to her and said, "I don't believe. I think believe marriage should be between a man and a woman." She said, "Oh, okay, all right. Then marry a woman if she'll have you." That was <laughs> that was my joke. That was my joke. Was I did, it really? Yes, I did it all. When we sued for marriage, I did it at the demonstrations oh, and when Prop God, Eight came I love around. That. But I was very thrilled to see that somebody had captured it, and also she did it perfectly. Beat, beat, beat. She was just like a stand-up comic. Her timing. <laughs> no, to me, this is. A, had she ruined it, I would have said, "Wait." That, but she <laughs> and I have. If anybody out there knows Elizabeth Warren, I have three more jokes that she could use. <laughs> Well, um, and, and speaking of that, we both know I have on my Marianne Williamson shirt yes. today, which I think, you know, uh, probably be tough for her to get the presidential position, but I think it's wonderful. She's been on that debate stage, bringing a new perspective to the table. I came that out has for, never been on that debate stage, I believe. I sent her 10 bucks. And, yeah. and the reason, and I said, I think we should, if we elect Marianne Williamson, the right will go nuts because they won't understand what she's saying. It's hard enough for us to understand what she's saying because people don't think in a spiritual sense right. or they don't think in this sense. I said, so if we elected her, they'd have to watch her every day like we've had to watch Trump. And they'd go, <laughs> what is she talking about? What is she talking about? So, so uh, she's very It'd bright. It'd be the, just the know? polar opposite, right? It would be the polar opposite of Trump, right. right. I, uh, I, I, I love that. I, I love Kamala Harris. I love uh, Elizabeth Warren. I love Mayor Pete, Pete. Mayor Pete Buttigieg. What I love about him is if he, him. if he loses the nomination, he can always star in the Book of Mormon. Right? <laughs> Doesn't right. he look like with the little yeah. thing? He looks like the guy that not. Hello, we're from South Lake. Yeah. So he's very, it's interesting because he's so intelligent and so well-spoken, very moderate, but yeah. so what, you know? Yes. But I'm, I'm really glad we have uh, uh, this wonderful who would uh, think the gay one would be the moderate so <laughs> well you know i, 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 I kind of love that <laughs> I, I would you know yeah. after working in in, yeah. in the movement a long time i would say 80 percent of, of uh, gays were moderate and yeah. and you know 20 percent to the yeah. left so yeah. i'd like to see but i just think it's wonderful for once we're all fighting about who we want we've never had like all these women and a gay person and marianne williams and i know it's, it's crazy it's, it's crazy good it's thrilling but yeah. i will vote even joe biden i will vote for whoever gets the nomination right because we have i think trump will be gone before then yeah, I know a very well-known famous well, psychic we'll see that if said he's going to quit. <laughs> well, I wasn't, but a friend of mine, an ex-lover who's famous psychic, she oh. said, I think he's going to quit. Okay. So. Well, we will test her. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for everything that you've done. Uh, it's so wonderful that you've spent your life making such a difference. I always like to have on people that are you know, p paying it forward. And you've had an amazing comedy career. You've had an amazing uh, activist career. And I know you're going to continue to do so. Well, so. you know why? Passion is better than Prozac.
<laughs> That's right. Come to and my show. Yes, I w- yes, we're coming. Oh, we already great. have tickets. November sixteenth. So, no, even if I didn't know the date, uh, <laughs> Saturday, November sixteenth at yeah. the Santa Monica Playhouse. Can't right. wait. Can't I, wait. I dish all my lovers. I'll tell the real secret behind <laughs> everything, including everything in the movement. It's all comedy. I love it. We'll be there. We'll see you there. Thanks so much for tuning in. Make it a great week. Hugs and happiness. Thanks for being on. Thank you. Yeah.